Good day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Right, Tuesday morning here, market still again sort of traveling sideways, down a little bit it says, so $2.84 trillion, so we're having trouble getting back up above that $3 trillion mark. Uh, and we can see, again, generally a bit of a, not a bloodbath, but I mean, def, things are definitely down. Nothing sort of too awful uh, from what we're seeing at this, you know, sort of front screen. And they, look, they shouldn't really be too bad anyway, because the market's only down 1.2%. But don't get me wrong, there's always exceptions to the rule. There's going to be a coin or two that's pumped. I mean, Shiba Inu, there we go, it's up 2.3% when everything else is down. And then there's going to be some coins that will also hit really bad. But Bitcoin dominance still sitting around that 42% mark. It was 43 now it's down a little bit. A little bit of volume there, which is interesting. BTC price, 63,000. So we've fallen under the 64,000. We'll have to wait and see how low we go. And ETH gas prices around 129 guay or $12.36. And again, if you can do a transaction for $12.36, you're doing well. That really is just sending ETH from one address to the other that you might pay $12 for. Anything smart contract related, forget it. It's gonna be way more. All right, so what's done well? Has anything done well in the last 24 hours? We know Shiba who's in there with a 2.3% gain. All right, there we can see Uma done quite well, 24%. Uh, Harmony 1, 9%. KuCoin, Wax, Nexo. So definitely some coins uh, that have made a little bit of a move. Some Tron uh, making a move there, which uh, you know, I didn't really think people were using Tron too much, but apparently it's still quite big over in Asia, and they did just uh, hook up with uh, Alchemy Pay, and we'll have a look at that as well. So look, there's some moves there. And any gain's a good gain, but really there's only one kind of good game, good gain, sorry, and that's Uma. And the rest, you know, they're just sort of generally low single digit movers, as we can see. But again, any move to the upside uh, is, you know, more than welcomed. Uh, it's the downside that people generally don't like. So now we've got to have a look at that. What hasn't performed so well then, considering the overall market is down? IOTX again was pumping the other day, Helium pumping, Lubrum, Kadena, Ecash. All these coins that are down are pretty much coins that were pumping just the other day. So again, if the market continues to play out the same way, these will probably fire up in the next sort of day or two and start to move up again. And the ones that were moving up today might still keep going up tomorrow, but then the day after that, they'll probably come down. That is the general uh, momentum of the market at the moment. But at the, I've got to say, I am a little bit worried at the moment. Just because, again, everyone's expecting this big blow off top in the next six weeks, and I just, yeah, I'm not sold on it happening. Um, look, if it does, that's going to be great, and I'll be as stoked as anyone else. But I just think, you know, I've said this a, a number of times, and I don't want to keep harping on it, but because so many people are expecting it, I just, I'm not sure it's going to happen. Again, look, if I'm wrong, I'll be happily wrong, you know, I want to make all the gains with everybody else, but I just get the feeling like we're going to get a correction before we get the final big pump. Just to scare everyone and make them think that the market is over, you know, this could be a triple top, something that just hasn't been seen before. We don't know, but again, I'm never offering you financial advice for a start, so please don't take anything I say as financial advice. It's just, yeah, it, it, there's something... Something tells me it's just not going to play out the same way. I don't know how else to ex explain it. Just a gut feeling I have. And again, look, I've been wrong before and I'll be wrong again. I'm never going to get it all right. But I just get the feeling in the bigger scheme of things, it's not going to play out exactly like it did last time. I think we'll still have somewhat similar results at some stage. I just don't think it's all coming in the next sort of six weeks to maybe eight weeks. Again, happy to be wrong, more than happy to be wrong about that. All right, let's have a look at the Bitcoin chart. We can see Bitcoin pumped up and now it's just kind of stalling here at the old all-time highs. They're about $62,000, $64,000 in a bit of a ranging motion. Now, are we going to pump back up to get to this 88000 or are we just going to kind of travel sideways and maybe even come back down and again test this $58,000 level, sort of even $60,000 level? Again, just scare everybody, things like that. Is this some Wyckoff sort of stuff going on? I mean, this isn't Wyckoff, it's a little bit different. But Wyckoff doesn't have to be exactly like that. It can still be somewhat similar to that. Uh, it can just change the shape a little bit and still be Wyckoff. 
just things to keep in mind. Again, I'm not trying to spread fight. I don't want to scare people or anything like that. But just when it comes to financial markets, if everyone's expecting it to happen, just, you know, at least keep in the back of your mind that maybe it's not going to happen. Because the way the big players make money is making sure what everyone thinks is going to happen sort of doesn't happen to, a, to an extent. Like they, don't get me wrong, they want to let it run at some stage, but they don't want to let it run when everyone else thinks it's going to run. They're going to try and shake as many people out as they can and get as much of it as they can before they let it really have that kind of blow off top. That's just the way it will work. Now, again, this could happen exactly like everyone, you know, has sort of put in the charts, you know, plan B, tech dev and things like that. And I really do hope they're right. I've got no issues with them being right. Uh, I'm just not sure it's going to play out exactly like that. All right, look, heaps of stories, which is good. Monday over in the States. Crypto venture firm Paradigm has announced a $2.5 billion fund. And it's going to be the industry's largest crypto fund. So Andrew Andreessen, sorry, Horowitz, he did have the biggest one, 2.2 billion. Now Paradigm has come out with one at 2.5 billion. And look, I'm sure it's not going to be long before someone else comes out with another one that's even bigger again. And this is probably something that we'll see, uh, you know, continue over time. Now I'm not saying they're all just going to come out in the next few weeks, but as this space grows and it is growing. I definitely see more things like this and 2.5 billion dollar fund is a lot now this i found interesting valkyrie so they had their spot bitcoin no that was van x sorry different company but valkyrie have launched a hundred million dollar on-chain DeFi fund and then the fund will get yield from lending liquidity pools farming and staking so again, everyone's real worried about all the regulation and things like that, but yet big business are putting money into this because they just can't afford not to. Again, the yields everywhere else are so small, you know, outside of, you know, kind of doing the VC thing and getting into projects early. Yeah, there's good money to be made there, but not all those projects work out. Some don't. But staking and DeFi, I mean, it is just constant, constantly making yield. And... Yeah, why wouldn't you want to get into it is what I say. You know, I've got a couple of plays in DeFi. Again, SNX, Aave, I really like those. Uh, and staking, I mean, that's not even DeFi anymore. Although you can consider it like uh, DeFi, I think, but not quite the DeFi that people are thinking of. And look, again, Valkyrie, $100 million into DeFi. That's got to tell you something. Now, they didn't really go into exactly what protocols they were going to use. I went through the article, and I think they wanted to basically keep that secret. Uh, <laughs> but $100 million into DeFi, that is not uh, chump change. Barbados. The actual country, yes, Barbados, are going to become the first sovereign nation with an embassy in the metaverse. Is this a sign of where things are going? I mean, you know, I don't know if they need an embassy in the metaverse just yet. I don't know if the metaverse is at that stage, but interesting that we've had a country jump over and they're only they're going to put their yeah, embassy in a metaverse. Very, very interesting. All right, as I said, Alchemy Pay, they've integrated with Tron, so TRX to enable payments. This is probably why Tron's had a little bit of a pump. And again, I really wasn't aware that Tron is actually still pretty big over in Asia. A lot of parts of Asia still really like Tron uh, and use it. And it is quite a large uh, blockchain, uh, quite cheap to use and things like that. So I thought Tron was kind of not done for, but just was one of those, you know, kind of not zombie chains, but, you know, a chain that was basically on its way out. A lot of the older chains just haven't done much. Uh, this time around, like Neo, perfect example, had all this hype around it last time back in 2017 and just has been very quiet since. And I'm not saying Neo's dead, but gee, you don't hear much about them at all anymore. They just don't have the fanfare. And Tron has been somewhat similar. It had massive hype back in 2017. Everyone was talking about it. It was scalable. It was this and it was that. And then it's just been you know, really quiet, at least on the news front. And again, over in Asia, different story. They still quite like it. But outside of Asia, I have not heard much about Tron at all. Hardly ever gets any sort of airtime about anyone really talking too much about it. But Alchemy Pay has integrated with them. So there you go. All right, Nexo. 
they are planning to buy back $100 million worth of their coins. So they're going to go to the open market and buy those coins back. And they said here, depending on how this buyback program goes, the Nexo Board of Directors will contemplate another one based on the results. And their aim is to repurchase tokens for investments in strategic uh, targets via token mergers with applicable vesting schemes to ensure... Uh, token holders interests it will also utilize portions of the coin to make daily interest payouts to clients who opt to receive their yields in nexo tokens so this will be interesting this isn't the first time a company has come out and bought back their own tokens and it helps to uh, keep the price up as well you know we'll see whether they kind of do that through the bear market to you know hold the price or whether that's something that they'll kind of start to do you know straight away i mean look they're already doing the first one it'll just be more about the second one and they did say they're going to do it in the next six months as well so yeah it'll be interesting to see how that goes if we're in a bear market within the next within the next six months uh but that is probably a good time for them to buy them back in all fairness when they're cheaper you don't want to be buying back your tokens when they're at all-time highs all right, the SEC still making uh, waves inside the crypto industry. So crypto mining stocks dipped as the SEC issues a subpoena for Marathon Digital Mining Facility. So a whole stack of blockchain uh, miners, their stock prices got hit. So it was Riot, Bitfarms, Digital, uh, Bit Digital, HUD8 and all that. And what it says here is the United States and Securities Exchange Commission, so the SEC, has ordered crypto mining firm Marathon Digital Holding, Holdings to produce documents and communications for just one of its mining facilities, and it was one in, in Montana. Now, it received a subpoena regarding an investigation into possible violations of the federal securities law related to its Hardin Montana data center. Now, the SEC's investigation, though, hasn't gone into the details regarding the subpoena, so we'll have to wait and see exactly what this is about i mean i don't know how they breached security laws considering they're mining bitcoin but again that's because i'm an outsider you know looking in i don't know exactly what the sec has seen but again this you know things like this they're going to continue there's going to be all sorts of stories that are going to come out and there's this is part of the space getting regulated in all fairness you know we don't know exactly what the rules are so there's going to be lots of things law you know court cases that'll come out and they'll set precedents and things like that and that's yeah where the regulations will come from so we'll have to wait and see how this plays out and exactly what this is about right biden's infrastructure it is being signed off so biden has signed the infrastructure bill handing crypto broker definitions to the u.s treasury now everyone's been really worried and concerned uh, about this and that you know small players and things are going to be de uh, determined as brokers and it'll just make things really hard and on the very same day senators wyden and loomis are going to introduce a crypto amendment to biden's infrastructure bill now wyden and loomis uh, draft says it seeks to revise the rules of construction uh, applicable to information sorry i'm struggling here with my words i'll start again Wyden and Loomis draft says it seeks to revise the rules of construction applicable to information reporting requirements imposed on brokers with respect to digital assets and for other purposes. In short, it would exclude individuals developing blockchain technology from having to report information about their users to government agencies. So the infrastructure bill's been passed and they're already looking to you know make amendments to it so this is going to be a long drawn out battle i don't think we're going to get any clear sort of regulation you know in the next couple of weeks i think it's probably going to still be like another year or two i think before we really have concrete solid ideas of exactly what the laws are and again this is just the us then other countries are going to still do the same and most likely that other countries will have a look at other countries laws and adopt some of them and sometimes just completely adopt them and other times just use them as a reference so yeah we're still a long way from you know having that clear regulation and really it's not until the clear sorry regulation comes through that we will be able to get that worldwide mass adoption the mass adoption will not happen until countries are really across this and there is a 
you know, a platform, a basis of what the regulations are. And again, you know, Biden passes the law today and senators come in and they're already putting in amendments. And I like the idea of these amendments. Don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to knock them for doing it. I'm just saying that this is going to be a merry-go-round for quite some time. And so people who are in the crypto you know in the crypto space right now you are super early there's not even laws and regulations about it yet that's how early you are normally people don't get into these things until you know years after this kind of stuff and again it's all the big players that get into things early and laws get made around that so if you're here you are super early i put out a tweet the other day and i said if you haven't made big or you know life-changing gains in cryptocurrency you're either invested in a shit coin uh, and you know excuse the language but that's what it is or you just haven't been in long enough you are super early if you are in good coins you know you've done your research and you simply hold long enough you're probably going to have you know returns on that that you just couldn't imagine now again that's never financial advice i'm not a financial advisor but history has shown with cryptocurrencies most projects that at least have some staying power after you know four years have made some no i won't say most that's not true i'm going to take that back not most projects but the good projects so bitcoin ethereum xrp now again people will say what they want about xrp but its price does continue to go up does it have drastic pull uh, pullbacks yes lots of cryptocurrencies do but it is been going up over time and again if you got into xrp back in the day you know you were getting in it from a fraction of a cent it's currently worth a dollar so it's well up over a hundred x it's you know probably a thousand x but you've just had to hold long enough so that is what you need to remember in crypto number one you're early number two if you've done your research and you're in good projects if it goes down don't panic you're just gonna have to hold that is why the gains are so big in cryptocurrencies because the falls are almost equally as big at times you know you need that volatility that's where those kind of life-changing gains gains come from and eventually that will peter out though eventually you know the the crypto market will be like all other markets it'll be slow and steady kind of gains but i think we're at least at probably a decade away from that now that's just personal opinion though all right that's it from me stay safe be kind to one another. Pretty hard to be on that gain train, but hopefully you haven't lost too much. And I'll see you next time.